Uh, my name is Craig Bartell. I'm a solutions engineer with Tableau based in Tampa, Florida. Um, I've actually worked with the state of North Carolina over the past six years that I've been at Tableau. We've done this series uh, a number of times where we kind of roll through the different capabilities of Tableau um, from the different perspectives of, you know, everything from data preparation to uh, the data analysis, which we'll be covering, covering today, to um, how our server-based users can can interact, and then other topics like mapping and um, dashboarding best practices and things like that. So we do do this in a series. Um, today's is kind of the uh, one of the first op first first ones of our series around um, the the analytics with Tableau Desktop. So with that, I'll kind of jump in here. It's going to be mainly demonstration. Um, but I just didn't wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of the platform components before we jump in, because I'm not sure exactly, you know, what the experience level is with everyone on the on the webinar today. Um, but this this slide kind of summarizes the process that we go through, and I'll just kind of review this. Um, we always start with data, right? And this data exists in many different places today. It can be in our you know, SQL Server databases, it can be in our applications, which could be in, you know, very specific vendor applications from Salesforce or ServiceNow or, you know, other vendors, or it could be in our local data sources like Excel and CSV that reside on our individual workstations or laptops or file servers or whatnot. But the bottom line is, is we have to gain access to those different data sources. And before we can actually move to the step of doing our insight analysis, many times we have to prepare clean uh, and prepare the data so that it's in a format that we can trust to get the answers that we need. And, I, and I'll just mention here that um, this component called Tableau Prep Builder is our tool for doing that. It, it is available to the state. Um, those that have creator licenses have the ability to use Tableau Prep. We have another session that will be going deeper into Tableau Prep, but I just wanted to mention that Tableau Prep is the tool that is used for that purpose. We then are going to cover today Tableau Desktop, and, and Tableau Desktop is really our insight generation content creation component of the platform. And I say that and I emphasize that because a lot of times people think of business intelligence tools as the end all be all tool to create dashboards for, for others, right? We deploy dashboards. But Tableau is really designed from the standpoint of allowing anyone, any analyst, making any person the ability to, or giving them the ability to create insights Right. And then, of course, those insights could be taken and put into dashboards and and collaborated with other people and, you know, those sorts of things. But I wanted to emphasize that and I'll, I'll be doing that as we go through the demo today. Now, once I, I gain those insights, I can then share them through these two different options. Now, the state has implemented Tableau Server, what you see on the right hand side. That is the on premise version of Tableau. And then we have the, the option that's managed by Tableau uh, and Salesforce called Tableau Cloud. It's the same exact product. It's just we manage it versus you manage it. So Kim and her team manage this Tableau server environment. Um, we've had it in place for probably six or seven years now. Um, there's hundreds, if not thousands of users on it already by eight, by the different agencies. It is segmented by the different agencies. And I'll leave it at that for now because we'll kind of lightly touch on that as we move into the, the demonstration today. So now I'm gonna flip over and we're gonna walk through kind of a typical use case of how do I gain insights into my data? So I'm gonna flip over here into Tableau and the very first thing when you install Tableau on the, the workstation is you kind of get to this main screen, which is that I need to connect to my data. Now you'll see a lot of individual tiles on mine, which you probably won't see on yours, which just means that I've I've created a bunch of visualizations to date that I could you know open up from here, or you can take advantage of some of these, what we call accelerators, which are predefined workbooks and dashboards that have already been created against standard data sets like Salesforce or ServiceNow or things like that, or some sample 
workbooks that you see down here that you can open up. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll see various resources that you can use to say get started. And these will link you to videos and content that we have out on our website. And then, so, so our example today is gonna be one that I've used many times. It's around um, child welfare. Um, I, I just like this data set because it's kind of very multidimensional and it allows us to look at different aspects. But this could be, you know, again, I want to emphasize this could be anything for your domain. If you're in finance, it could be looking at cost data versus budget data. Um, if you're in transportation, it could be, you know, looking at accident rates or, you know, driver motor vehicle queue line times by location or whatever it might be, right? And so I don't get too hung up on the fact that the data is very specific to child welfare. Um, I had to pick something. So over here on the left-hand side, you see the different data source drivers. These are what I would need to use to connect to either, you see that there's, it says to a file, those are considered local files like Excel, CSVs, JSON, you see the list here. We can even connect to spatial type files. So I know, <clears throat> I know the state uses Esri. If you have shape files or you wanna to connect to an Esri server to pull very specific custom shape files down, you can do that. I'll get into that in a little bit. And then down below here, you have access to all of these different types of data sources like SQL Server or Salesforce or SAP or Oracle, you know, you name it. These are all the different drivers that we ship with the product. And then some additional connectors over here, which are more specialized, that if you wanna to get to say an Amazon S3 bucket, you can do that. Uh, if you wanna to get to ServiceNow, you know, et cetera. So we're in the business of connecting to data. So chances are you'll be able to find your list here. If you don't, just let me know and I will work with you to get kind of connected to the type of data that you want to connect to. So for today, we're gonna to keep a simple example. We're just gonna to connect to, and I'm just gonna show you what it would be like to connect to some data. So in our case, we've got a, a data set in Excel. And if I opened that data set, you'll notice right away that what we're going to do is, and you'll see it's kind of dragged in the one tab that I had in that spreadsheet, and it's showing me a profiled view of that data. So you see on the left-hand side, I get kind of a, a row list of all the different values. Um, and then to the right of that, if I collapse this window, I get a columnar view of what's sitting in that data. Now, um, you may see Florida here. We're gonna actually be using North Carolina data today. This is just an example of connecting to a data source, but you can see here that every column has a data type associated with it. So. What we've done is Tableau has a lot of feature functionality built into it to guide the user to kind of help with the whole process so that you don't have to be an expert in everything. And you'll notice this throughout the whole process of doing insight analysis. Um, for example, like this column has an ABC, which means that it's been typed as a string. This particular column report date has been typed as a date because it sensed that it was a date time format when we brought it in. This one over here, I'll go to county, has a globe icon, and that's because we recognized that this is a valid county name. So we went ahead and typed this. Now, the significance of this is that we will know now within our visualization to be able to, to show this as on a map, right? We'll be able to show a county, per, you know, the, the actual delineation of a county, the outline of a county on a map because that's built into our product. and. This is significant because with many of the other BI tools out there, like Power BI, you have to have additional add-ins like the Esri add-in to be able to do that. And you're limited to the number of you know points you can draw on a map and things like that. So I just point that out because I know a lot of times people are like, well, how, how does this product you know different than Power BI? Because I maybe have some experience with Power BI and that's fine. I'm not here to bash Power BI. I'm just kind of pointing out the differences and why I think Tableau um, has a better set of analytic capabilities for the, the typical end user, not the developer type of end user. So, okay, with that, as I keep moving forward here, you see that we've got data across different areas like, you know, date of birth, some demographic information. So we're basically gonna be looking at the incidences of child um, related uh, case type data. Um, this also helps me get 
this this view helps me make sure that first of all i'm getting the data that i want right that it's in the right format so that when i start analyzing i'm not like why do i have a null in that field right you know why i, I expected to have data in that field and i don't so that's how that works now Many times too, I'll need to bring in additional data and I'll just show you what that's like too. Let's say we wanted to marry up county data with population data. So I bring in another file here and I've just dragged in and I've linked the two together, uh, let's say on county ID, right? Where we now have said that the county relates to the county on this table related to that. So you can do, you know, fairly intricate type of joining and unioning to get the data that you want. Now, I'll also mention too that even in this step, while we're making data available to our analytics process, we can actually use this and publish this data source to Tableau, to Tableau server for later use for other people. So in this whole process of curating a data set, since you're going through the effort of cleaning it and making it available just for your application you might as well make it available to others so there's a there's a process you can go through to actually publish this and make it available to others all right one last thing to talk about here this up in the right hand corner you see there's an option to be live or extract so live allows us to connect directly to a data source so pretend this was a sql server data source i would be actually every time i do something on the screen like drag or drop a field it's actually in the background submitting a query back to SQL Server to get that data. Now that's great, but the problem sometimes is we don't we're not allowed to go directly to a data source. So many times we will use what's called an extract, where we actually take the data and then we load it into memory into what we call a hyperfile, which is really incidental. Just know that it's a a highly performant copy of the version of the data that I have. And the reason that we do that is for a number of different reasons. One is to offload it from, say, a production system that you're not allowed to contact directly. The other is that it's like five to 10 times actually faster than doing a SQL query to the data source. So it has its benefits of wanting to do that. Now, you if you publish this as an extract, you can actually refresh it on a timed scheduled basis. So that's kind of the data acquisition side. And now we're gonna to move to the insight generation. So I've kind of constructed this, this workbook. So it's got some blank tabs at the bottom. This is the construct within Tableau that we use. So you'll see that as you start working with Tableau, you'll get very familiar with this, this palette that I have over here, which has different drop zones. And I'll kind of review those right now. Um, as we go through through our example here. So on the left, first of all, you see the data that I, I have as it was brought in from my data source. Now I've spent a little bit of time moving the fields into a little bit more readable folder view so that I can see you know, the data in a little bit more organized format. Um, and that's fine. That 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 helps because again, as you as you're the curator of the data here, it might make sense for you to make it a little bit more readable. But I want to point out that these items that you see on the screen take the the shape of pills, right? You see that this is a blue pill, and it's blue because it's dimensional or categorical, right? So in this case, the allegation. Let me move this window open a little bit. The allegation description is a dimensional type field. So I could count, say, the number of allegations by allegation description. Now, if you come all the way down lower into my data here, you'll see that I've got green pills that have a little pound sign next to them. Some have an equal sign next to them. That just means they're a calculated field. But for example, this field called number of allegations, which we'll be using a lot, is actually account of the number of allegations so any of these like population or number of repeat victims or age uh, you know at the time of report are all things that i could use to aggregate by these other parameters up top like you know by county by time of day by you know relationship etc right that's how we're going to go about this now it's just a matter of how do i want to analyze my data now, this is what I was getting at before. Tableau doesn't force you to pick some sort of a widget, a chart widget to, you know, to then, you know, parameterize and look at. What we do is, for example, let's say I just wanted to know by county. So you see I have a county field and I just take the county field and I drag it over here to the middle of this screen. 
And then what I need to do though, is I, I'm just going to go ahead and drag in here my state because I, I, I need to let it know that it's North Carolina and it actually built a map for me. And it said, okay, yeah, I, now while it only put dots where each one of the counties are, it, it built me a map rather than building me a list of values of the different counties. Now, why did it do that again? Because Tableau is kind of giving, helping me here saying, well, he probably wanted a view of all the counties rather than a list. Now, if I wanted a list, I could certainly do that. But, you know, I just wanted to point out that that, that is kind of one of the the hallmarks of the, the product here. Now, a couple things happen, right? I drag these out and then they appeared on this thing called a marks card. So a mark card, if you think of it, where whether or not I'm showing you a bar chart or a map or a, a pie chart or whatever it happens to be, everything that I draw on the screen is considered to be some sort of a mark. Like this point right here is a mark and that mark has, has properties, it has color, it has size, it might have a label. So that's the premise that I'm, I'm can, I can tailor the color I can tailor the size and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and we'll use those interactively across different types of shapes like bars, lines, areas, squares, circles. And that's what makes Tableau Tableau. You have the ultimate control of what you wanna show on the screen. You're not limited to a chart widget like you would be in another tool type. So um, since this is a map, it also dropped this generated field in rows and columns called longitude and latitude. latitude. And that's because a longitude is very similar to columns, right, left to right. And then rows are very similar to top to bottom, right? A latitude would be from top to bottom. So that's how we generate there. And it'll make a little more sense too when we get into some of the visualizations, right? Well, now let's say that I wanted to know what the number of allegations were by the the actual individual county. Well, if I take number of allegations pill and drag it on top of color, watch what's gonna happen. It just filled the counties now. Now it knows that I should probably wanted to show each one of those as a polygon and it automatically made it a map type. Again, this is Tableau doing what it does best, which is guiding me to the 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 orientation that best shows this. Now this map can actually be tailored a number of different ways. I'll just point this out that, for example, I could have the background map here be street level views so that if I wanted to, you know, in fact, let me go ahead and make the map a little bit less, you know, light there. If I wanted to drill into the Raleigh area, you see that I'm now getting a map view of the Raleigh area, right? So I can have a street level view, or I can also have a satellite level view we're actually looking at, and I'm just drilling into successive levels of detail. Our mapping engine is very quick, very responsive. So um, it's very, very easy to do these sorts of things. Um, I'm gonna go back to our original view here because we can, again, I just wanna show you that, that there's many different ways of tailoring it. It might make a lot of sense if you're at the city level to show a map so that people have some relevance to that. Now you'll notice too that it actually shaded the map based on the color scheme that I asked it for, which was the number of allegations. So over here, and, and by the way, this is fake data. So don't get concerned about what you're seeing as being real or you know or whatnot, it's all fake data. You see that this county is showing that it has a higher number of allegations than this county, right, for example. So it's a darker color. I can change the color palette if I want. I just simply come up to the legend and I can I can select any of these other palettes if I want. If I wanted a red blue diverging and I wanted the, it to be red so that the, the red red color showed up higher, I could do that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, actually, let me let me change it up. I think I want to use maybe the um, orange blue diverging where the that color scheme is is the higher one. So. That's what I'm going to leave it as. Um, if I wanted to put the county name or the sum of the allegations actually on the map, I could just drag that to label and you see that I get that as a label value. Um, that's another way that I could do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the undo button because that gets a little, you'll notice my tooltip actually has the value already embedded in it. So a tooltip is auto generated for me when I do that. All right. 
So the next thing we're going to do, we're, we're, we're going to create a brand new visualization here called allegation trends. So I start with a blank palette, right? Now this time, once again, I'm going to start with my number of allegations and I'm going to drag that here to drop field here. And you notice it creates this big fat bar, right? Okay. Now that's because, and it dropped it right here under rows because this is one big fat row. Well, what I'm going to want to do is now, since I'm looking for a trend over time, let's go ahead and bring in the report date, meaning when this case was reported. And if I drag that to columns, watch what happens. It changes to a line automatically, right? And Tableau did that because when I'm doing time series type data, it probably makes a lot more sense to show things in a line than it would be in a bar. Now, if I wanted a bar, I can always come back to the mark card and I can change it to bar and you'll see it changes it back to bars. But again, I can make it squares, I can make it circles. Again, this is what makes Tableau Tableau, right? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it back as a line. Let's talk about dates. So when I bring in a date, it defaults to the year level. Now I actually have day level data. So let's talk about how we can split up the dates based on these different functions like discrete months or continuous months. So for example, like a continuous month would be, or sorry, a discrete month would be for any of the years, I just want January summed up or I want February summed up or you know March summed up. So you see, I've only seen the actual calendar uh, month. But if I wanted month over month by year, I could come down to continuous month, and now I see year over year by month what the value was, right? You see if a drop off here, it's probably because I had partial data, so I'm just going to exclude that value. Now I've got a nice trend over time, and of course, like I said, I could go change this back to bars if I really wanted bars. I don't like bars in that scenario. I really do like this type of a view. But it also might look a little bit better as maybe an area chart like that. So yeah, let's leave it like that. Or I could toggle on the, the values if I want. It gets a little bit busy because again, I do have the tool tip there available. I can also take advantage of this analytics tab over here. So we know that end users aren't great at say, you know, trigonometric functions or out, you know, um, or, or um, algebra, those sorts of things. So say I wanted to create a trend line, but I'm not sure exactly how to mathematically formulate that and, and add it here. I can just drag it in and I get to add a trend line. Now it's showing me the trend of cases. And likewise, I could add in average lines, constant reference lines, medians. Uh, I could even do cluster analysis. So, you know, we recognize that end users are not data scientists per se, but, you can see in the very few you know, actual keystrokes that I've done here, how much I can actually get done. Let's say that I am a data scientist and I, and I code in R or SAS or something like that. Well, maybe if I, if I wanted to bring my R model in, I can actually bring in a function that actually plots a model's data on my map here. There's certain calculation functions that I can add. I'll kind of leave it at that for now, but just to mention, let's say you had to go out and score something from an R model. You had to score the risk value. You could send it out in the calculation to the R model, score it and come back and then plot it in the map here. So it's all, it's all very possible to do something like that. So now we've created two views to insights, right? We, we look by county what our incident levels are. We see the allegation trend over time. So things are going up, that's not great. Now let's look at one of the, maybe the demographic groups here. So I go again to another blank tab. And um, this is again gonna show you kind of how, once you get a little proficient with Tableau, how you can do some neat things. So let's just say that that I bring in my, my um, my big fat you know, number of allegations now, but now I want to break it up by age group. So I've got a field up here called age group, which just breaks things into different categories by the different age groups. So I see that I've got age groups all the way up to over 18. And then you see that we've got a kind of got a trend here. We've got a spike at eight to 11. Now, what if I wanted to make this what's called the kind of a lollipop view? So I could leave it at that right now, or I could make this what's what's called a lollipop view. And 
I'll just kind of show you how I might go about doing this. So I'm going to duplicate. I just copied that pill. Now I have two rows with the same data, but I'm going to make this top one circles and leave this one as sticks or or bars, right? So you'll notice over here on the left side, I now have two mark cards. That's because I have two types of marks. I've got a duplicate of both, right? So for the first one, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make them um, circles. Oops, sorry, I did that wrong. I needed to go to this individual mark card. I'm gonna make this one a circle. And this one down below, I'm going to leave as a stick, but I'm going to make them really small sticks. Now, I think you can see what's going on here, right? I'm going to marry the two together to make them into lollipops, right? Um, we call that making them dual axis. And actually, one thing I need to do up here for the circle is I want it to show that number as a relative size. You can see on here, the smaller in incidents are bigger bubbles. So now when I go ahead and and create the two or overlay overlay the tools as dual dual axis i need to come back to this one make it a circle and then this one i want to make it a bar and then i'll scale this one up a little bit just to make them look a little bit bigger and then i'll so i'm playing with these values now to make the size of the sticks a little bit bigger you know etc right so you can see what i'm doing here just playing around uh, maybe I also want to colorize um, the the circle by the the number as well, and I'm just going to reverse these so that they appear. So again, you kind of see what's going on, right? I'm I'm able to create whatever. This is again the power of Tableau. How did how would you have done this otherwise? Except you would have to have had some sort of like a lollipop sort of chart widget, right? So again, I did it by using the mark card here and this. This is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but nonetheless, um, it, it works. So let me add one last thing here. Um, let me go ahead and add the label for that. And then for that label, I'm just going to make the alignment be in the center. So it shows up like that. Maybe we'll scale it again up a little bit larger. There you go. All right, so I have a nice kind of lollipop chart showing me the, the allegations by age group. Now, again, later on, I'll combine all these together into a dashboard. Um, and now let's let's talk about, let's say that I'm not that proficient with Tableau and I want it to help me create a chart type that based on what I'm selecting for my data. So to do that, I come over here to this show me panel Right now, everything is grayed out because I haven't selected anything yet. But as I hover over each one of these chart types, like for example, this tree map, it's saying that for a tree map, I have to have one or more dimensions and one or two or measures, right? That's what's required. For a stacked bar chart, I need to have one, one dimension, one measure. So um, now if I start, for example, let's say that I wanted to have uh, again, the number of allegations, so I'm clicking on that, and then I'm going to control select the relationship description. Now you see up over here on the chart type thing, it's showing that it recommends this as a, as a horizontal bar chart. And that's true, but in my case, I want a tree map, right? So, but I'm not sure how exactly to create a tree map. So I'm going to click tree map. And you notice what it did do. It actually dragged automatically it put the pills where they needed to be, which makes sense. It made the mark type square, because you see squares over here. It it made the size of each square by the number of allegations, the color by the number of allegations, and it put a text value on here called biological parent. Right? So again, very nice ability to do that. Now, if I wanted to also add the, the text label in here, the number, I can just simply just drag that on the label field as well. Now, what if I wanted to break this up by rows by another type of uh, maybe the allegation description? So it's already by the relationship type, but I'm gonna drag the rows over here by relationship type, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just sort top to bottom. I'm gonna make this the entire view. And now what I've done is I've, created and broken out a tree map into multiple rows, right? 
this this is one of those things that just it allows you the analyst to kind of drill to the level you want to go to based on your analysis so now i wanted to see the relationship and the allegation type all kind of you know broken out that way so and then if i wanted to change the color you know i could do that as well let's maybe match our color scheme to you know what we picked before the orange blue diverging and there we go see the biological parent seems to be the highest for neglect and then then so on here all right well we're now at a point where we've created four different visualizations and i'd like to kind of put them all together into a dashboard but again i want to highlight that if i wanted to if this was the only question i wanted to answer and i wanted to share this with others i could post this into into tableau server right now i don't have to create a dashboard i don't have to do any of that i can just simply just go ahead and publish it and we'll we'll kind of do that in a minute but i'm going to now open up a different type of worksheet tab called a dashboard so a dashboard allows me to drag in and place them where i want in this field of view so let's say that i want you know, over here on the right hand side, I want that maybe at the bottom of the screen, I want to put these and I'm just simply dragging these in where I want. Now, I might take a little bit more time and create a more, you know, visually appealing sort of a, a thing. And you can certainly do that if I toggle on maybe and I change the the type here, I'll make it bold, make it a little bigger, the, the actual name. I could change the color background of all these, you know, anyway, you get the idea, right? My legends are brought in, but I've just created a dashboard and, you know, literally a couple drags of, of steps here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna tie each one together because now I could kind of do multifaceted analysis. I could do geographic analysis and its impact on age groups and you know, relationship types. So to do that, we just simply click on each one and we say, make that a filter. Right, make this one a filter, make this one a filter, and I'm gonna make them all filters. For for example, if I wanted to just drill into, you know, this particular county, it's actually gonna ripple through now and show me the result and effect on the the allegations for the others. So like if I clicked into that one, you see now now maybe I'm only concerned with this this time frame. See now it filters to just those. And now I only want to filter down to what, what ones have to do with biological parents in that category. So I've just literally narrowed down across a number of different segments. Or for example, maybe I wanted to start at the highest level, focus in on this highest, you know, since I have eight to eleven is my highest grouping of concerned individuals. And then I'm really you know, interested in physical abuse so i click into that one i can see where in the state i seem to have that age group you know because maybe we need to have a campaign in this particular county or area or counties about that type of abuse that's going on right um or analyzing the trend over time to see whether there's something time related was it event related you know whatever is it historical so there's different ways you can use your your insights by combining them together. Okay, um, I'm going to at this point now we've created a dashboard. Um, we've gone ahead and gained a, insights, but what I want to do now is share this with others in the organization. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to this top thing and I'm going first of all I have to sign in to the environment that I want to publish it into and in my case just pretend this is Tableau um, Tableau server but it's going to be for me my Tableau cloud environment and I would select that environment in your case you have single sign-on to your your AD environment that you have or your NCID environment so I put in the name of my environment, put in my password, and then I have to do my MFA authentication, which I'm doing on my phone here. And now I can publish this to a folder of my choice. 
That's just a little warning message there because there's a lot of data. So now it's saying, where do I want to publish this? And you see, I've got all these different folders. So server is a permissioned environment. So we're, we're managing the content. So we have to put some controls in place. So I've got different folders that I can specify where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in this folder. And then I can decide which of all those worksheets do I want all? Do I want just the dashboard, you know, et cetera. So in my case, I had this dashboard that I created, but I have a final version of one that I'd created as well. We'll just use the one that I have here. Um, and now I can talk about permissions. So if I wanted when I publish this for only certain users, maybe um, a specific group of agencies or set of users or regions um, or an individual user, I can customize what they can and can't do with this content. Can they download it? Can they edit it? Can they, um, you know, uh, inter inter um, interact with it? Can they save certain things from it? These are all sorts of permissions that I have available. And then ultimately I click the publish button. And when I click the publish button, um, let me go ahead and yeah, we'll we'll publish that out. So right now it's going through the process of publishing that out. And then once it's published, you'll see that it's gonna place me, and I'll probably have to move this into view, a browser window with me logged in. And I'll move it into focus here. So there's my, there's my view. And you can see that it successfully published it to this folder. There is the tile. Now I'm in Tableau Server. And in Tableau Server, I can manage all the content. I can search for content. But let's just kind of open up what we... So now as a consumer, let's say that I shared this with my team or my management. Now when they click that and have access to this, now they can interact with it. So they can say which counties down in the south that I'm responsible for you know, how how has it impacted things, you know, et cetera. Then I have all these different interaction capabilities, like I could set up custom views. So for example, if I wanted that South view uh, or or maybe the the um, Wake County view, I could say save a custom view and call it my Wake County view. I could make it visible to others and save that. But now if I wanted to go back to my original view, I could click on that as well. So you can see there's different ways I could save that. Um, there's something called Data Guide. Data Guide is kind of one of our earlier forays into artificial intelligence where, for example, if I were to click into this particular mark, now, when I when I open this data guide window, behind the scenes is analyzing the data and it's trying to find relationships about it. So it's saying there is a high number of allegations. Is there some sort of correlating factor? So behind the scenes now, it's running statistical algorithms to determine relationships between all of the different dimensions and measures in my workbook, in my data source. And when it finds results from that, it will present them to me and allow me to do further fine grain analysis. This may take a look, there you see. So um, it's telling me things like there is one extreme value. Let's, let's avoid the states over here. But now if I look at allegation details, it's showing me that this is the category that seems to be prevalent. And if I were to click this, little window here, it's gonna open up. It will ultimately, when I put this in edit mode, allow me to open this up in another whole viz pane where I can do my own analysis. So this is a great tool for just surfacing to me other things that it may not know about. Uh, what are other contributing dimensions like, um, like we saw allegation description, are there number of victims per case? Is that something that could be significant? So you see this little, you know, chart that's drawn out for me, right? So data guide is a very useful feature that's available to users um, of all kinds. You can set up subscriptions. So if I wanted to make sure that others in the organization get subscribed to this on a timed basis, like when the data refreshes or on a specific schedule, they in their email will get a link to this content. 
So now, just to, to clarify too, when I distribute this content, it has to be to others that are licensed users of Tableau. It cannot be people that are just, first of all, outside the organization. For public facing content, we have a solution for that. There's another server type that, that supports what's called a guest user. And those, again, that's just another topic that we would probably need to delve into. You can set up alerts. So alerts would be threshold based so that, for example, if the number of allegations reached some threshold, I could set up this alert to trigger and send it to these recipients on a timed basis. They will get an email saying, hey, this alert has been breached. You need to take action. You need to do something. And, uh, and then from there, there's something called comments. Comments allows me to have kind of a running trail of comments through this. So for example, I could say uh, to um, somebody in my organization to um, please take a look at da, 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 and then I post this, they will get notified through either Slack in the future, very soon they'll be able to get it through Teams your team's infrastructure, and then you'll get notified, and then they would just click that link in there, and it would take them right to this dashboard with the content in it. That's called comments. I can share this, again, to any licensed user by simply dropping this link in here. I could take the embed code and drop it into a website or a portal if you have an in inside portal type environment. Um, and then there is a web v version of the editor. So for example, if I had the either creator or exploration type license that we have, if I click this edit button, it will open up in the editor. The editor is like 99% of the same feature functionality that I had in the desktop version. And so for example, if I didn't like the color scheme and I wanted to come in here and change it to, uh, I don't know, the, you know, the red, blue diverging, uh, I could do that. And then I would just simply republish this. Now, again, this comes back to permissions. If I didn't have the, I probably don't want to overwrite the original one that was published. So I would, might put it into my personal workspace. But um, that is, yeah, let me, let me exit out of that. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking at my list of, of options here for what things I wanted to cover. Um, okay, I think, you know, we've, to date, we've covered a lot. We've covered how do I sites? How do I gain insights? How do I create dashboards? How do I publish them out to Tableau server? So I think at this point, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Does anybody have any questions? If so, maybe uh, come off mute and uh, let me know. Is there a link to like a data dictionary or a beginner's oh. beginning guide? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I know this is a lot. Like this is Firehose, you know, 101 running running through all this stuff. So to that, I'm glad you asked that. So mm -hmm. yes. So if you go to tableau.com, there, there's a lot of different resources. Um, First one here is if you go to resources, learn Tableau, and then free training videos. There's all these different things. First of all, free training videos gives you these nice little getting started. You know, how do I log in? How do I connect to data? What does that workspace area look like? And it uses our kind of standard, it's called Superstore. It's a retail data set. You know, all of our training uses that retail data set. But, you know, you get a nice little video. Uh, if you choose to use, some of the more now I, I don't I can't remember because it's been a while since I'd supported North Carolina, but from a and maybe maybe Kim can help us with this one. There there are certain e-learning capabilities that are available. They're more online course like virtual course type work that we can do. Um I will also, if you're new to Tableau in your agency, what I would encourage you to do is contact me. I would love to talk through use cases with you and how we can best, <clears throat> excuse me, make your agency, you know, best suited to use the tool. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking about like the most efficient format of the data in the data source for it to display so perfectly. 
Like if you're thinking about Excel, Excel spreadsheets, tabs, so on and so forth, <clears throat> being able to understand the correct or the best way to have your data listed so that it becomes easier when you're trying to build your report in, or build your data, whatever yeah. the term should be in. Yeah, Tableau. yeah. Yeah, no, you, this is a great topic, which we'll address more in the prep webinar, but let me, let me talk about that now. So let me go back to our, cause I saw a question in here about like, how did I join it and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, this, this is the default kind of data, um, data source, um, manipulation, uh, formatting, you know, tool in the workbook itself, but you, but probably nine times out of 10, we need to spend a little bit more time, like analyzing what the data is that we use. In fact, um, we have a little time here. I'm going to just fire open prep builder, um, in the background so I can kind of show you what that looks like. But this, what you're seeing here is this is a more complicated join that I used for the actual data set, right? Where we actually did a, uh, a join here um, and this Venn diagram kind of shows you what the join type is between these different, why isn't it actually kind of going dormant on me? There we go. So you can see that this is where I would specify the type of join, you know, from county code to county code here. And you can see it's an inner join. Over here, it's a left join, right, for this one. Um, but Tableau Prep Builder, which is what I'm going to, what's going to come up here in just a second, gives me a little bit more control over what I can see along the path of my transformation of data. Because we all want to know, like, okay, what state is my data in? Do I have a lot of nulls? Is it aggregated to the right level? Do I want to pivot my data? But a lot of times we have to write scripts or we have to open an Excel and write all these filters to try to see what it is you know, we're, we're actually working with. So this is Tableau Prep Builder. Um, let me just show you an example. This is something that I use in our, in our, um, in our, in our uh, prep workshop that I would do, do the next time. So for example, this is showing me here that, you know, I connected to data. This is, this is a home listing. This is my example I use. It's kind of home listing data combined with survey data for a region. But the, the this what we call clean step node allows me to connect to that data source. And now I can see that profiled view. I can see the distribution of data. It'll allow me to do things like make recommendations about the field type. Like it senses that I have a zip code here. So now it's going to validate it as a zip code, right? To make sure I've got valid fields. Or I could see that certain columns have nulls in them and I can decide what I want to do. Do I want to change the value from null to something else, right? And it's a multi-step sort of thing. Like I can then, you know, at this level come in here, bring in my home listing data, and I can join it together with my survey data. And then I could, you know, output it and make it available to, to analysis with Tableau, right? So I know I realize I'm covering that very quick, but this is this is the component that will give you that we either one of two ways either tableau prep through this tool here or through the the workbook itself when i'm when i'm creating the actual data source and i'm 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 linking together the fields does does that make I, sense yeah i'm following i'm following you so the option that the prep builder you can prep your your data before linking it to tableau or you have the option to do the prep within what I'm seeing now. Right, and and the, and the and a major point I will make is that if you go this route, if you go prep, this output step creates that hyper file, or it can create Excel. You can even write back to a database if you want. But now this prep flow, you're spending a little more time, you're curating a data source, and when it's published now, Others can use it as the starting point. Like what I would only see here is this one box and it would say hyperfile. And that would be all of the data that I needed to then start my analysis, right? But it could have come from a standardized place. So I know the data is curated and, or maybe I want to add to it. You know, I want to open it up and add another 
Excel file to it because I have some local file that I want to, you know, marry to it. So, yeah, that that is kind of a whole topic unto itself because you're right. You know, you don't you got to know what you're looking at first to make sure you've got trusted data. And hopefully this, you know, this profiling view makes your job a little bit easier so you can see exactly what you're working with. And then, of course, prep gives you this ability to look at, you know, this this kind of um, aggregated view. You can see which, you know, like in the gender column, I've got 52% female and I've got 530 rows that are 48% male, right? Or mm -hmm. how many do I have by county, right? So we, oops, sorry, this is the survey field. But in this case, I wanted to pivot all the survey results columns into two columns. So I did a pivot, right? And then I got them all, you know, and then I aggregated them up to the level of zip code. So there's a lot of things I can do that I really can't do in the in the other editor that I just showed you here. And mm -hmm. I, I realize I'm throwing a lot at you guys this morning, but. And ask me, the... ask me these follow up questions. My apologies, but it's, it's coming. So last follow up question, and I think for the DPI contact, I think it's Kim, and my apologies if I got that wrong. Do we have access to the Tableau Prep Builder, or is that something, a different license? No, like, you do. It, it comes with your um, Tableau desktop creator mm -hmm. license that you use for Tableau. It's also included in that, so you have access okay. to it. Mm -hmm. So we get a chance to play around with it. Thank you very much. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and... Kim, I can't remember. I'm gonna I'm gonna go just go to this. If they like don't have it installed on their desktop, do they have a procedure they go through, or is it just the um uh let me I was gonna try to get to this site, the Tableau um support releases site where they can go down to uh here, like if you go to Tableau prep and they can download the current version, right? If you well, come down to here. we yeah, unfortunately, with our with the the server and the version of the server, we will provide you with the version that you need. But you're if you have admin access, you can download Tableau Prep, and um, it's either in the software center as well. So, and if you need the version, just reach out to me, and I can provide that to you. The one that we're using with this currently with the server now. Um, but yeah, it, it, like I said, if you have administrative rights, you can do it. If not, you'll have to reach out to your desktop support or the software center. Oh, and I, by the way, I, um, there was a question here, how do I contact me? Um, I, I put my name in here. Now, now I, I don't want to supersede Kim because Kim is your main contact at DIT. Um, Kim and I work together. so. Um, you, you, there's also a colleague of mine, Kelly Klein, who's on maternity leave. She's actually the main person assigned to NCDIT. I just have a lot of history with NCDIT. So in the meantime, I'm covering for Kelly, but that is really incidental. You know, if you have any questions, probably best to contact Kim first, but I put my contact info. Um, I'm happy to get on the phone with you guys to talk through scenarios you know use cases and whiteboard or you know whatever you want to talk through if you you know talk through data um you're having you're stuck because you can't figure out what the best way to be to visualize something happy to help with that um right no that's that's fine um if you want to reach out to me if you need craig we'll get craig involved and we'll do whatever we can to help yeah, it's probably best to contact Kim first because she's kind of the central point of command. And um, if she's got a resource there that can answer the question, then that's probably most expeditious. But, uh, you know, Kim knows where to find me. We're we're, we're always working together. So yeah. I think that's it. Um, if you have like like we said, if you have any other questions, concerns or anything, definitely reach out to us and we'll be glad to help.